thanks to everyone for coming out this morning and uh, a little breezy but uh, it's worth it's worth being out here for the great news that the governor is going to be delivering and uh, you know all the folks that support the project support for me we very much appreciate you being here to join us in this very important announcement for those of you that have heard me say this before i can only reiterate how great it is to be at these events with Governor Hogan announcing great transportation projects for Marylanders. And uh, it's, I will follow him to every corner of uh, every county to be able to talk about the improvements that are being made. So before the governor speaks, I'd like to introduce some dignitaries that are with us. And we have uh, Anne Arundel County Executive, Steve Shu here. Anne Arundel Councilman, Peter Smith, there, over here. He also happens to be my councilman. And then we have Anne Arundel Councilman, Jerry Walker. And with us from the Fort Meade Community Covenant Council is Claire Lauder. Claire, over here, thank you very much. And so with that, let's just get to what everybody came here for, and that's for the remarks from Governor Hogan, who has clearly demonstrated his commitment to fixing the transportation system in Maryland. And I am so proud to be even associated with him so please welcome Governor Larry Hogan. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all very much for joining us this, after, this morning. Is it still morning? Mm -hmm. This morning. Um, over the past few months, uh, we have been traveling from one end of the state to the other, making important announcements to underscore our administration's investment to improve our state's transportation infrastructure. Last January, when I took office, we inherited a state infrastructure that for eight years had been ignored and severely underfunded. A billion dollars had been siphoned from the Transportation Trust Fund and was spent on things completely unrelated to transportation. As a result, Maryland had crumbling roads and bridges and the worst traffic congestion in the nation. In addition, state funding for local road improvements had been slashed by up to 96%. Our proposed budget allocates an additional $231 million in highway user revenues to local governments, an increase of 18.9%. That included $63.1 million to Anne Arundel County to be restored over the next six years. I've made it very clear that building, maintaining, and fixing Maryland's roads and bridges would be our top transportation priority, and we are doing exactly what we said we would do. We've committed an unprecedented $2 billion in shovel-ready infrastructure projects to finally move us forward on the top priority road projects in every single jurisdiction in the state. Here in Anne Arundel County, Maryland 175 is the number one transportation priority. And today, I'm happy to highlight our administration's investment of $139 million for three vital construction projects that will widen Maryland 175 to six lanes from 295 to Mapes Road. First, we are investing 82 $81.2 million in new funding to replace the Maryland 175, Maryland 295 interchange. This project will replace the four-lane Maryland 175 bridge with a six-lane bridge and reconfigure the ramps at the Maryland 295 interchange to improve safety and reduce congestion. Second, in collaboration with our federal partners, we're investing $43.7 million to widen 
Maryland 175 from Disney Road to Reese Road from a two-lane undivided highway to a six-lane divided highway with a median to improve access to Fort Meade. Anyone who has traveled Maryland 175 during rush hour can tell you about the gridlock along that, along that stretch of highway. Third, we're investing $14.5 million for improvements at the Maryland 175 and the Reese Road and Napes Road intersections to include additional turn and through lanes to better access Fort Meade and the construction of a new security fence and tree buffer along Fort Meade's property. In addition, today we're also announcing in partnership with Anne Arundel County an investment of $5.5 million to study increasing capacity and improving safety on the south side of Fort Meade at the Maryland 295-198 interchange. All of these projects are critical to delivering the infrastructure needed to meet Fort Meade's incredible growth. 52,000 federal employees who work at the Fort Meade complex rely on Maryland 175 each and every day. By 2035, traffic along this route is projected to be more than doubled what it is now to an average of nearly 66,000 vehicles per day. The investments that we're highlighting today will ease a notorious bottleneck that has plagued this region for far too long. A top concern of our administration is the safety of our citizens, and this road simply isn't built to handle the volume of traffic and to adequately provide access to jobs. The fact is, everyone in the state relies on Maryland's roads. We have a responsibility to the state as a whole, and the projects that we're investing in are going to help citizens get about their daily lives in a faster, more efficient, and safer manner. Our administration remains committed to the future of Maryland transportation. This much needed funding for Maryland 175 is just part of our administration's more than $470 million transportation investment here in Anne Arundel County. And it is just one more way that we are changing Maryland for the better. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And, you know, it's really great to be joined here today by several groups who are supportive of investments that help Fort Meade and BWI as well. So we have the Fort Meade Alliance is here. Would you all raise your hand that are with the Alliance? Also the West County Chamber. to invite County Executive Steve Zhu to say a few words, and I can add before he does, is that Anne Arundel County has been a great partner with MDOT, and had it not been for the fact that the county provided us the planning funds needed for the Maryland 295 and 198 interchange, this project would not be positioned where it is in order to move forward. So with that, please welcome County Executive Shu. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and uh, good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm honored to be here today with other elected officials and representatives from MDOT and, of course, Maryland's Governor Larry Hogan. Our county is lucky to have a friend like Governor Hogan who cares about our roads and has shown his commitment to restoring the much needed transportation funds that communities need throughout the state. His investment of over $400 million over the next six years in the long-term transportation infrastructure of this county shows how important Anne Arundel County is to the state and to the governor of Maryland. The planned improvements to Maryland 175, 295, US 50 and elsewhere will improve the quality of life for all of our citizens, especially those tens of thousands of commuters who use these roads every day 
for work and for shopping and other needs. Our residents know that West County, West Anne Arundel County, home of Fort Meade, NSA, Maryland Live, Arundel Mills, and Odenton Town Center, has become the growth engine of our county's economy. Housing such vital national and statewide assets puts Anne Arundel County in a position of critical importance to the state of Maryland. But these vital assets need the support of the state and the Hogan administration is demonstrating that they are a great partner as we work hard to deliver key projects for this area helping fund our number one road priority. At the county level we also understand the value of putting our money where our mouth is uh, to move West County projects along more quickly and that's why we contributed three and a half million dollars for the planning phase to upgrade Maryland 295 and the Maryland 198 interchange. Those investments combined with Governor Hogan's decision to add two million dollars to the current transportation budget for engineering for this interchange on top of the 81 million in new funding to replace Maryland 295 Maryland 175 interchange will help reduce the bottlenecks and congestions in this area and ensure that we are not clogging the economic arteries of Anne Arundel County. With so much support from our governor for local transportation priorities, now is not the time for the General Assembly to micromanage transportation choices in Maryland. Right now, we have a great system for deciding what projects get funding with local input and quick decision making. Current procedures include our senior local transportation professionals, senior county staff, the county council, and the Anne Arundel County delegation to the Maryland General Assembly in determining transportation priorities. Those priorities are then transmitted to the governor and things get done quickly, efficiently, and objectively. Current legislation before the General Assembly would threaten that flexibility and diminish our county's input and thereby hurt Anne Arundel County. I urge our delegates and senators to not try and fix a system that is not broken and keep intact a process that will allow more announcements like this one here today in Anne Arundel County. Days like today pave the way for a brighter future for our citizens and I want to thank Governor Hogan for making that possible and demonstrating demonstrating such faith in our county, our economy, and our people. Thank all of you for being here today and have a great day. Thank you, County Executive Shu. I can tell you that Colonel Brian Foley, commander of Fort Meade, would have loved to have been here, but right about now, he is on an aircraft flying back into the area and uh, it, I know very much wanted to be here. I have met with the Colonel several times now to discuss the needs of Fort Meade and we know how important it is as an economic driver for the entire county. So it's unfortunate that Colonel Foley couldn't be here, but I know he's very happy with the results of the governor's actions here today and, and before. So with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. And I know the governor, I understand, will be able to go forward and you'll have a chance to ask him questions. So thank you again for coming. And uh, it turned out to be great weather for this. Have a great day and be safe.